They're the founders of the popular mushroom chocolate brand Alice Chocolates. Today, Lindsay Goodstein and Charlotte Cruz are talking with us about the healing power of mushrooms and more. This is Advocate Now. Lindsay and Charlotte, I'm so thrilled to talk to both of you because you're helping to fill a void in the wellness space, particularly when it comes to mental health. You had a desire to provide something that neither the pharmaceutical industry nor supplements had fully been able to provide. So tell me how Alice Chocolates was born out of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really, I came from a background six years. I was in big pharma medical device. And, you know, after just seeing so many people hooked to Band-Aids and not really addressing the underlying health issues, I started to do a lot of research into like natural alternatives to pharmaceuticals and quickly became fascinated with mushrooms. Um, and, you know, the more I learned, the more I wanted to take them and started finding that there was a very big white space. Um, everything out there was very reminiscent of pharmaceuticals. It was powders, pills, tinctures, and there was nothing that um, was just delicious. And that really kind of got me thinking as to why wellness doesn't need to be uncomfortable. You know, it should be something that we celebrate and we enjoy. And I think that really was the basis of my formulation. I really got into the kitchen after that and started formulating for the two things that I was struggling with, which were sleep and focus and brought a homeopathic doctor in to work alongside me. I learned a lot. Um, functional mushrooms are incredible, but they don't work you won't feel their effects instantly. They have to compound in your body over time. So I knew it was going to be a mix between mushrooms and herbal supplements, nootropics. Um, yeah, so it was really, that was the beginning of the journey in my kitchen. And it's been such an incredible uh, opportunity. All the people that have come to the brand to work on it. It's been, me and Charlotte got connected through a mutual friend in the space. And yeah, it's just been so fun getting to work together and build the brand. And I love that you say that wellness shouldn't be uncomfortable. I mean, it should support the body, not fight the body. And I feel like that's what a lot of pharmaceuticals try to do is like going against the, the nature of how our body functions. But you spent two years collaborating with homeopathic doctors, formulators, chocolatiers to develop these chocolates. Why was it so important to both of you to make sure that the formulation was just right? Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, mushrooms are tricky to work with and so is chocolate, right? Um, we wanted this to be delicious and we wanted it to be effective and we could have launched it a lot sooner, but I think the emphasis we put on sourcing um, was very important um, as well as the taste. So yeah, it was really a balance, a balancing act. And functional mushrooms are often categorized into two main groups, medicinal mushrooms and adaptogenic mushrooms. Can you tell me what the difference is between those two? Yeah, absolutely. So functional mushrooms, right? They're a class. There's about 12, 13 functional mushrooms that we know about. And some are adaptogens. And a, the meaning of an adaptogen essentially is that um, it's something that you take daily and it helps your body adapt better. So you react better to stress. You can react better to basically the changes in your day that help you and help yourself maintain homeostasis, just an even keel. Um, and so reishi and cordyceps are like adaptogens, but lion's mane isn't an adaptogen. Um, but lion's mane has a lot of really amazing properties that work in a way that adaptogens don't, right? So it, lion's mane directly feeds your brain and can help to regrow your brain cells. Um, and it does that by actually being able to cross the blood brain barrier to directly nourish your brain cells, which a lot of supplements and, um, different things on the market can't do. Um, and it stimulates nerve growth factor and helps create new neural pathways. And speaking of adaptogenic mushrooms, I feel like adaptogens and nootropics have both become big buzzwords in the wellness arena. We've seen a lot of people, um, you know, utilizing mushrooms in, in their products as well, but what are nootropics and, and how can we benefit from incorporating them? I think there's so many ways we can benefit from incorporating them, right? Like nootropics are supplements that we can take that help our brain work better. So it's kind of right there in the description, right? Like we 
can benefit from things that make us function better, make us smarter, more focused, more engaged, more present people. Um, and I think that that's really why this brain care space is booming so much. I think particularly in this post-pandemic world that we're in, where people have such a focus on wanting to feel good and take advantage of the time that they have and make every moment count. Um, these supplements and these mushrooms and these adaptogens and nootropics that can help us feel our best, I think are just so important. And people are really starting to realize that. I think that one thing that's really interesting about Lion's Mane, and you know, there's a really big emphasis right now on all nootropics, but like Charlotte was saying, because the blood brain barrier is so protective, it is very hard for a lot of these nootropics out there. They could be incredible, but it's hard for them to actually get to the brain, if that makes sense. And because Lion's Mane is so molecular, molecularly light, it's able to actually cross that. And I think that's what makes it so special. And I just want to clarify for people who might not know the difference, you know, functional mushrooms are becoming more and more popular, but they're different than psychedelic mushrooms. Can, can you explain the difference as well as some of the effects that psychedelic mushrooms or psilocybin can have on someone, especially when it comes to mental health? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we like to categorize this. I think the easiest way for people to conceptualize it is to think about mushrooms in three different buckets. So you have psychedelic mushrooms contain psilocybin over here. You have culinary mushrooms over here. And then in the middle, you have your functional mushrooms. So the difference being, right, psychedelic mushrooms have psilocybin in them, which is a compound that is what induces what people think of as a trip, right? Or an ego dissolving experience. And there's a lot of research being done about the benefits of psilocybin that we really strongly support. But essentially what can happen is if you take a certain, a high dose, you can have a experience that is really spiritual for a lot of people, is really healing, helps a lot of people with PTSD or stress or anxiety. There's so much research coming out of all the different things it can do um, and really that is accessed by some of the properties in it that help your ego get a little bit more quiet. Um, and then functional mushrooms, they don't have any psilocybin in them. So you will not trip from functional mushrooms. It's physically impossible, but they have compounds in them that are very medicinal that can help you with a range of different things that you may be struggling with. So there are a lot of different functional mushrooms that are good for different things. Um, and then you have your culinary mushrooms over there, which are nutritional and they're delicious and we love them, but they're not going to have those medicinal benefits that functional or psychedelic mushrooms will have. And, and you touched on, you know, the research on the use of psychedelics. When you look at some of that research, Research. It's so fascinating to see graphs of the brain and how brain chemistry can often change after the use of psilocybin, but there's still, there's so much shame around this topic. It's still so taboo when in my opinion, it can be, and I believe it's far more beneficial than say an antidepressant. I would never want to put an antidepressant in my body, although, you know, everyone has a different stance on that, but how do you think we can change the perception around psychedelics? I think education is number one. And I think that's a big thing for Alice coming out the gates as a, you know, a newer brand in this space. It's really important for us um, to not be leaning in on buzzwords, but to be explaining what all these buzzwords mean, you know, what, a, what a microdose is compared to what a functional, taking a functional mushroom looks like. Um, I think these things are number one for everyone right now. Yeah. And I think in addition to education, it's really putting a trustworthy name face brand out there, um, particularly even in the functional space. This is a really big goal of ours is to make our brand something that people feel like they can trust, that they can look to as a source of education, because as people start to become more familiar with functional mushrooms and the benefits that they have, I think it's going to start to open their minds to, okay, what can I get from psychedelic mushrooms? How can they help me? How have they helped other people? And just kind of opening people's minds through education and trust and understanding. Lindsay and Charlotte, this is such an important conversation to have. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you so much for having us. I'm Sonia Baghdadi. Thanks for watching and advocating. For more stories and content like this, visit advocate.com and advocatechannel.com.